The movie centers around Kepler A-22, a research base run by Tian Industries, which drills in the Mariana Trench. Nora Price, a mechanical engineer, is part of the team there. One night, as she's getting ready for bed, she notices the lights flickering and feels something's not right. Suddenly, an earthquake strikes and she rushes to alert the crew. Only Rodrigo, one of her teammates, wakes up. The base starts to fall apart due to the deep sea pressure, so they head for the escape pod. Nora fixes the pod's computer issues to ensure their safety. Just as she's about to close the pod's door, two other team members try to make it in time. Nora waits for them, but the base floods and they don't make it to the pod in time. Forced by the situation, Nora closes the escape pod door, feeling guilty about it. Then an explosion in the pod knocks both her and Rodrigo out for a while. When Nora wakes up, she finds out that they can't communicate with anyone and they need to find another way out. They navigate through the destroyed parts of their base, Kepler, and find another team member, Paul, trapped under debris. They manage to free him and feel a bit better for helping someone, although Nora still feels guilty for those she couldn't save, even though Rodrigo tells her it's not her fault. Eventually, they meet up with Captain Lucian in the control room, but he doesn't know what's causing their problems either. They also find Liam Smith, an engineer, and Emily Haversham, a biologist, and all of them trying to figure out what to do next. They can't get in touch with the outside world, so they decide their only option is to walk across the ocean floor in special suits to get to another station, Roebuck 641, and try to get back to the surface from there, even though it's very dangerous. They get ready to go, feeling nervous about what's ahead. Their suits are very heavy and hard to move in, but they need them to survive the deep ocean. Soon after they start, they face a scary moment when Darjiko's helmet breaks because of the pressure and he dies instantly. They make it to Roebuck and there, the captain notices a signal from another escape pod that might have another survivor. He sends Paul and Smith to check it out, hoping they might be able to help someone. As Paul and Smith go deeper underwater, it's so dark they can barely see. Then they come across a dead body among the debris. The captain tells him to return immediately. The moment is heavy with sadness, especially when the family photo drifts away from the dead person. This scene shows how committed they are to their work. But then, a creature that was feeding on the body attacks Paul. Smith manages to shoot it, and they bring the creature back to examine it. Emily, looking at the creature, says she's never seen anything like it before and thinks it might be from an unknown species that they stumbled upon by breaking into a hydrothermal pocket. Suddenly, the power goes out in their pod and they hear strange noises as if something is hitting the pod. They're all scared and unsure what's outside. They spawn a creature with tentacles through a window but then they realize the shaking is because Kepler is blowing up. They rush to the pressure chamber as their pond hits the ocean floor. After escaping the damaged pond, they head to the station for safety. On the way, debris hits Smith. Nora and Lucian manage to pull him to safety, but his oxygen system is damaged. They clean their suits and head to Roebuck using the tunnel. Halfway through, the tunnel floods, forcing them to leave the machine behind and walk. Debris blocks their path in a corridor, forcing them to swim through one at a time. Nora leads, followed by Emily, Lucian, Smith, and Paul. But Paul sees a dangerous creature and gets trapped in the debris. Suddenly, the creature attacks him. Paul had been feeling uneasy during their mission, but still courageously helped lead the way through tight spaces, often lightening the move of his humor. Despite their efforts to save him, the creature grabs Paul and fatally wounds him, leaving his suit covered in blood. As the group continues, Nora and Lucian try to fix Smith's broken oxygen equipment without success. With his suit damaged, Smith risks suffocation from toxic gases released by the explosion. Refusing to abandon him, the group decides to support Smith as they walk. Navigating the dark and unknown ocean floor, they encounter a strange humanoid creature and turn off their lights to avoid detection. The creature pulls Smith into a cage, prompting Nora and Lucian to attempt a rescue. Lucian bravely enters the cave to secure Smith with a robe. While Nora and Emily work to pull Smith out, the creature captures Lucian, and Nora gets dragged along by the attached rope. Now, Nora and Lucian are cut off from Emily and Smith, finding themselves in a different part of the ruins of Kepler. The creature they had captured earlier looks similar to the one they're facing now. This creature seems to haunt humans and is driven by a need for blood. The drilling activities of the Kepler seem to have disturbed it and possibly harmed many creatures like it. While Nora is freeing Lucian, the humanoid creature shows up again, this time trying to bite Nora's helmet. Lucian fights to save her, 
but the creature is too strong and starts dragging him through the water. Nora, still tied to Lucien by a rope, is pulled along at a fast pace. She refuses to leave him behind, but the speed at which they're moving could kill them both. Lucien chooses to cut the rope to save Nora from the pressure difference, and she sees his suit explode just before she passes out. Nora wakes up to her suit's low oxygen alarm and finds herself in an old part of Kepler called the Shepherd Station. She gets out of her suit and tries to reach Emily and Smith, but can't. Inside Lucien's locker, she discovers a pentagram drawn on an old drilling site blueprint. Rising against time, Nora fixes her suit and heads towards Roebuck. On her way, she meets Emily, giving her hope. Nora and Emily carry Smith, who can't walk due to his low oxygen, towards Roebuck, the main drilling station. TN Industries, the company behind us, seems rich and powerful, but their moral choices are doubtful. They start drilling in the Mariana Trench to get resources, putting ocean life at risk with their large-scale operations and the use of harmful chemicals, all for profit. When they get to Roebuck, they find a bunch of sleeping humanoid creatures hanging from the ceiling. They try to move past them quietly, but Emily's oxygen alarm accidentally wakes one up. As they walk through, a creature grabs Nora and starts to swallow her, but she manages to kill it from the inside with her flare gun. The flare gun's light wakes up the other creatures, but surprisingly they don't attack. Nora then spawns an even larger creature in the distance, ruling over the ocean floor. Curious, she fires the flare gun again and sees that these creatures are the offspring of a gigantic ancient creature called Cthulhu. Realizing the danger, Nora runs to the escape pods and manages to get there safely. Inside, where they have oxygen, Emily helps Nora out of her bulky suit. As they try to get to the escape pods, the massive Cthulhu keeps attacking the station, shaking everything. They manage to reach the pods, but Nora sees that only two are working, meaning someone has to stay behind. She keeps this quiet and makes sure Emily and Smith, or a couple, get launched to safety. Nora insists that Emily go with Smith, knowing she'd be taking away their chance of happiness if she didn't stay behind. Nora has dealt with loss herself, always carrying a photo of her late boyfriend who died in a diving accident, and she's been looking for a new purpose ever since. Nora faces the Cthulhu and his minions, ready for what comes next. She watches Emily and Smith's pond go up, then decides to destroy the station, the creatures, and herself by making the nuclear core explode. This huge blast wipes out everything, including Nora. After the escape pods reach the surface, the event becomes big news worldwide, drawing lots of criticism. Sources say Tian Industries isn't helping with the investigation to what happened and is even planning to start drilling again and do more of it. The movie shows a scary creature from the deep sea, but it suggests that the real villains are the people running the drilling company on land. Their desire for profit leads them to disrupt the ocean's natural state. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and take care, and see you next time.